Hello and welcome. My name is Marilyn Harder. I'm a Pilates instructor and a Pilates master trainer. I'm here to tell you about planks and plank modifications. So planks is that one exercise that you just love to hate. It's the one that when you're finishing, your body feels incredible, but in the process, you're pretty sure you're gonna die. So the first thing I wanna talk about is uh, modifications for planks. So sometimes we have things going on in our elbows and our wrists that make it difficult to hold a full plank. So it's always better to keep the same plane. So using something like an elevated box or if you're working at home, like an ottoman, uh, in order to create a solid foundation. And you always want to be in a number 11 for your planks or palms down number 11 versus the pyramid. What happens in the number 11 is it allows your shoulders to draw back and down and open to engage the lats and the serratus, um, as well as the connections in the front body to stabilize. When we go into that pyramid, what happens is that our chest tends to wanna to round forward and we kinda of hulk it out. It may feel more connective, but we're not building the posterior side of our, our um, body. So basically what, in, what we are in fact doing is we're putting excessive load to the front side of our rotator cuff, excessive activation of the chest, and we are deactivating uh, our mid back, lats, etc. So if our overall goal of our Pilates practice is to be activating our front body in equal opposite activation of our back body, we want to practice in that way. So the number 11 versus the pyramid. And then in that position, making sure that our shoulders are over those elbows versus sunk back or even worse, sunk forward. All right, now wrist modifications. There are certain things that are happening within that wrist that um, potentially are not injury related. Potentially it is an issue in which we are not activating the strength within the wrist and the wrist is sort of collapsing into itself. It's like sitting into the joint and it's very dysfunctional. So there's a place on your hand that's called the carpal arch. It's the pinky ring and middle finger. So I want you to take a moment and do a little activation exercise with me. I want you to let your arms relax on your, on your lap, and I want you to grip your thumb and point your finger together, making that little okay symbol, and I want you to squeeze really hard, as hard as you can. And then tell me what you feel. Most of you will feel just a little bit of an activation in the inside of the forearm, but that's about it. Now we're gonna activate into our carpal arch curling our middle ring and pinky finger into the palm of our hand and squeezing like crazy. So again, let your arms relax and now go ahead and do so. If you have nails, try not to bite your, your nails into your skin, maybe put the pads in the hands. But now as you do so, you should feel a greater activation. In fact, I just felt my core turn on after squeezing just that space. I feel the, the carpal arch, the palm of my hand, a really great burning in my forearm. My bicep has plumped up. I feel my tricep activating against it. And I feel my lats down my back and my serratus kick in. And then the harder I squeezed, I started to feel my rectus abdominis fighting against the thoracic, the mid thoracic back in that thoracic tug of war, all activated just by squeezing that carpal arch. So oftentimes we feel things in our wrists because we have weak wrists and a weak carpal arch and a weak grip strength. And as a result, we just dump and sit into the joints and we feel none of that activation. So when we do a plank, we want nice wide fingers and grip into the earth to try and activate that carpal arch. So when I tell people to push into the pinky side of the hand, I'm not saying fingers, I'm talking about the ball of their hand. Really trying to push in the joints of the pinky ring and middle finger into the earth to find that activation. Now, while we're building that strength, um, things we can do at home is we can grip things. So let's say you have like a water bottle or something, holding it with your guns out, thumb and pointer finger, and try and drink out of it. And just notice day in and day out that you do have the ability to activate. 
Then we can use what we call our training wheels for those wrists. Um, these are my favorite training wheels and they're called WAGS, W-A-G-S, uh, Wrist Assured Gloves. And what they do is they have a little wedge within the, the heel of the hand and it is um, sloped. So as a result, it decreases the flexion of the wrist and then rolls it right into the carpal arch. So it basically puts you in that assist to make sure that you're gripping right into that carpal arch and finding that connection and control. Um, I have helped hundreds of people purchase these um, and they really have made a huge difference in their Pilates practice and just practice it in, in general. So these retail for about $60, give or take, the WAG. Yes, these ones are the um, pro. And then if you've got really weak wrists, you can wrap the second piece around, which is called the ultra. In a pinch though, you could fold your mat back and add a couple layers to create that little slope that's in the, um, the wrist assured glove. So here I am on the slope and it decreases the flexion and I have to actively push into the outside parts of that hand. So you can create this wedge at home. However, if you're someone who suffers from another condition within the wrist, examples include severe carpal tunnel, uh, potentially a basal joint injury here at the thumb, which is really common in women over 55. Um, things like that that are anatomical differences and not just that weak grip strength, that is when you would want to go into that forearm plank. So again, um, there are other options as well. So coming into our full plank, those are the go-to options. However, if you are in a place of your practice where you want to work the full plank, but you can't load the elbows or wrists, we work in an incline plank. And an incline plank is not a lazy plank. It is still a lot of work. So here is um, the example of the incline plank. You can be pressing up against the wall. I'm going to turn for a moment or step here into the corner of my screen. Let's go ahead and pivot you so you can see me. And I'm going to be using the frame of my window here. So you can step back and find that best plank for you, pressing into the pinky side of your hand and lifting to a toe to activate. So this is a way that you can really perfect your plank in space, work the carpal arch, work the grip strength in the process of you building your plank. Now, if you want more details on that plank, tune in to one of my next two videos. Thank you so much for our wrist and elbow modifications.